Over the years, the bar for what can be considered entertaining and stimulating content has only gotten higher and higher. Believe it or not, but there was a point in time where people would go out of their way to listen to the radio. Now we just have them in our cars to use as background noise. And in recent years, it seems the television has largely been heading in the direction of the radio, but to an even worse extent. With the amount of unskippable minutes straight of advertising, shows are just so much more accessible now. An ironic statement since there are oh so many different streaming services, but a true one nonetheless. And TV's just becoming worse and worse as YouTube and other social media sites are popping up with more tightly knit content. No longer do you have to watch a 22 minute episode of a show designed for mass consumer appeal. Now you can watch hour long video essays about topics that are more niche. Or watch something you're actively looking for on Netflix, Disney Plus, and other streaming services. But as you look back at the various forms of entertainment over the years, you may begin to notice a pattern. An ever increasing amount of flashiness and stimulation to keep people engaged with what they're watching. This, of course, leads to extremes. Big movies are getting longer and longer to satisfy fans of longer media. But what's on the other side of the spectrum? 15 minute videos turn to 10 minute videos turn to 8, 6, 4. Then, we begin to enter the form of content known as shorts. Short form content was already an existing thing long before TikTok with other sites like Vine and Musical.ly being decently successful before this. Yet, they both ultimately ended up being shut down. One due to a lack of sustainable income, and one due to a buyout from ByteDance in 2017, which took Musical.ly and used its technology to form the backbone of TikTok, which released that very same year. And since its launch, TikTok has gone through a plethora of mainstream phases culminating into the massive internet giant the site is today. But to get a good grasp on the topic, we're gonna have to enter the cesspit for ourselves. It's time to forfeit control, and let the algorithm guide us as we make our way into the Matrix, the application known as TikTok. This morning, new warnings about the Benadryl challenge on TikTok after the death of a 13-year-old in Ohio. Morning and a new TikTok trend is inspiring students to steal items from school and even vandalize bathrooms. Something I want to point out before moving forward here, TikTok alone isn't the problem here. YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels, Facebook Reels, every social media platform has adopted a method of viewing short form content. And while it's definitely strange to see platforms known for their regular content combating TikTok by becoming TikTok, the most effective thing to come out of all this is the spread of short-form content as a whole, including the problems that come along with it. So first things first, how exactly does TikTok work? While a site like YouTube uses an algorithm to give you videos it thinks you'll find interesting, then letting you choose based off of topic and thumbnail, TikTok works by letting the algorithm generate a list of videos for you. This eliminates the need to create any gaps between watching videos, a time when someone may feel a need to log off and do something with their day. One of the first things you'll notice about the app is that every design decision was made to maximize viewing time. Thanks to the data of 30 million daily TikTok users, the algorithm has gotten really good at its job. The For You page can quickly pick up on the types of videos you like to watch. TikTok videos have different ways of catching your attention. It could be someone doing a little dance, or something like an experiment or crazy story found on Reddit. But if flashing colors doesn't do it for you, you can always just watch someone commit some crimes. From soap dispensers and toilet paper to entire urinals. Yeah. While there are a lot of ways to get the viewer's attention, a popular one is the classic internet challenge. And while they started innocently enough, in the modern day, things are a little more extreme with dangerous or illegal challenges, like NyQuil Chicken, Devious Licks, and uh, 
whatever this girl's doing. Partaking in acts like this just show the sheer desperation some people on TikTok have to get famous. Even if doing these things are more likely to result in infamy, or even more likely, nothing at all. But regardless of the method, both the platform and the creators have a shared goal of producing content for the viewers to be satiated. I believe this can eventually pose a risk to middle length content, the 2 to 8 minute mark specifically, as they're not long enough to capture the long video viewing crowd. You might make the argument that when it comes to content length, it's not one or the other, and there will always be an option for everything. And while that's technically true, here's something to keep in mind. In the time it takes you to watch an 8 minute YouTube video, you could be watching 8 or more different videos by different creators. Will the content of a short ever be as detailed as a full length video? No. But 1 minute is just enough time to give the viewer a fun fact or tell them that something happened or exists. Maybe a podcast clip of someone giving advice. When watching short form content, it's easy to trick yourself into thinking you're doing something important or productive because of the sheer amount of information you're picking up. And when directly comparing the amount of content you're viewing and the average view duration of an 8 minute video, it's pretty obvious to see which side is winning the battle. But with all this short form content, all sorts of different genres and methods of getting your attention, how much worse can things get? Well, I don't think we have to imagine it. We've made it to the point where we can no longer just watch a video for one minute without some sort of distraction. We need something else to look at for the few milliseconds we aren't engaged. Andrew Tate, Family Guy, Mobile Games. Whatever moving image is enough to grab a viewer's attention and keep it away from something that doesn't make the platform money. These TV show clips with mobile games and similar satisfying videos are an interesting method of gathering viewer attention using a method of engagement seen a long time ago on YouTube. Gameplay commentaries are a genre of YouTube video that have been around for years now, being popularized by the now terminated Leafy is Here. It was a genre of content that included a YouTuber telling a story, or talking about a cringy video with an unrelated game being played in the background. While standard today, the prospect of keeping viewers watching with something as easy as mesmerizing surf gameplay was revolutionary, and allowed for one or more uploads daily. So with that in mind, it's easy to see why mesmerizing mobile phone games made their way to fill in the empty spaces of a Family Guy clip. And when watching them, I often found myself watching the colorful game, rather than the stiff Family Guy animation. But why exactly do people choose to do this? Simple. To go viral. But getting TikTok famous is probably one of the most fruitless ventures commonly experienced. And I'll be happy to explain. Let's say it's a dream of yours to go viral, to become a niche internet micro-celebrity, to make some videos and rise up the ranks to become a famous TikTok star. When you start a new TikTok account, it isn't uncommon for one of your first videos to get a couple hundred views. This is because the algorithm is showing your video to a test audience to see if it's good for mainstream viewing. This is to weed out the hey children guys, making Jordan. bad videos. YouTube does something similar, but those views given to you serve a second purpose, to get the user hooked to the platform. Now the uploader knows what it feels like to have a hit video, and with that momentum, it's usually enough to keep someone going for a few weeks or even months. But more often than not, the user never catches that second wind they so desperately sought after. But let's say you manage to get lucky with the algorithm, and a ton of people watch what you made. Hopefully it was something you were passionate about and not just some fading trend, because as that trend dies, so will your TikTok presence. And if you want to try to divert your newly acquired audience into watching your other stuff, what new audience? That audience that watched a singular video forcefully thrown at them by the algorithm couldn't care less about you. They were either exploring a trend or got you on their For You page. And even when you get some followers, the majority of TikTokers don't pull consistent views. But if you're that desperate to retain viewership, there's only really one option. Create the same exact video over and over again to keep getting into the algorithm. 
and I'm not talking about making a video in a similar style. I mean, keep reacting to the same people. Keep doing the same dance to the same song. Keep spouting facts from Reddit. Keep playing mobile games while letting Family Guy clips play. Use the same music with the same presentation every single time. Blend in with everyone else and don't do anything special. Become another pillar used to build up the system. Branching out even the slightest usually just leads to the algorithm outright abandoning you. After all, you're no longer fulfilling the content it wants, so it'll promote someone else who does. You have such a narrow type of content to make. No longer are you a unique creator, you're the My Singing Monsters guy, the Beatbox guy, the Bad Ideas guy, the Hit or Miss girl. Could you even say you have an audience if a good amount of them can't even remember your name? No one remembers who you actually are. They remember the one thing you do or the one thing you did. If you ever feel trapped in a box making YouTube videos, then imagine how much smaller that box must be for TikTokers. Having to make the same video over and over again. And if they don't, then they lose what little clout was accumulated. TikTok success is probably the most unstable source of internet fame you can come across. And also the most useless. If you only re-upload Family Guy clips, you aren't exactly broadcasting your hilarious personality. <laughs> All you gain from it is a number on a screen. And while it sure is cool to look at, people just don't care about you. And the monetary aspect isn't there either. On YouTube, I can understand why people make a text-to-speech bot read memes or Reddit stories, cause they get paid from the amount of ads placed on it. But with TikTok, you either make so little money that it doesn't matter, or you don't get anything except for the temporary attention of people on the internet. Attention that'll fade away, leaving you in a worse position than you started out. As I was watching more and more of this short-term content, I started to wonder something. How short is too short? More specifically, will there ever be a point where viewer attention spans drop to the point where minute-long videos are no longer sustaining viewers? Will videos ever need to be shorter? Let's say, six seconds? Remember Vine? While you can describe YouTube shorts or TikTok videos as short-form content, Vine was this exact same thing but with an even shorter time to work with. Six seconds. People had to be attention-grabbing. And this often came from creators yelling to gather attention. Something commonly seen in YouTube today. As well as in the content of the people who brought that with them. So with only one tenth of the time shorts occupy, Vine would have to be the worst thing ever, right? No, actually. I'd actually argue that TikTok is much worse than Vine, at least in terms of viewer attention spans. And this is all due to the age in which it was created. Vine as a platform hit its cultural peak in 2013 and continued steadily till the end of 2015. That was back when YouTube videos looked like this. So Vines were mostly made up of skits, jokes, or older internet challenges, like the Ice Bucket or Cinnamon Challenge. But in the year 2023, there's now more competition for people's attention than ever before. The average popular YouTube video usually requires a whole team of editors, so that the video remains continually watchable. Adding even 10 seconds of unengaging content is usually more than enough for some to flat out leave. And 10 seconds of nothing? Well, that's just a death sentence of viewer retention. Hello? Are you still there? Anyways, if Vine were still around today, it would undoubtedly become more annoying than TikTok ever was. It's because of its shutdown that Vine can be remembered as not the worst thing ever. But when it shut down, it did bring a number of annoying people to YouTube. But if we are talking about the YouTube experience, we might as well talk about YouTube videos as a whole. Over the ages, specifically the last couple years, YouTube videos have gotten a lot more attention grabbing as well. And it's not just shorts. Regular length videos have slowly gotten to this popping text, flashing colors, ADHD overstimulation approach to content creation while also having the same presentation as whoever's popular, an aesthetic that just feels fake and corporate to me. 
fitting, since the style came from people copying Mr. Beast, a literal corporation. I've done a full video on thumbnails, but in terms of the actual videos, a similar change can be seen. Flashier and more crazy thumbnails lead to more interest, and the same can be seen with video ideas. The Mr. Beast style is clearly what works, so it's easy to see why people are just following whatever he does to gain YouTube success for themselves. And honestly, I don't blame them. YouTube as a whole has been getting more and more corporate for years now, so it only makes sense that to be successful on this site, you have to treat it like a business. But let's say someone wants to make some good mid-roll ad money on short-form content. Maybe they made a bunch of shorts, or maybe they stole some TikToks and want to make a profit. One way to directly get TikTok content without using shorts is compilations. Compilation content is nothing new to YouTube, with meme compilations being around since memes became a popular thing. TikTok compilations are videos that used to make sense back in 2017 when TikTok first hit the global market, but after the advent of YouTube shorts, they've quickly become outdated and unnecessary. Regardless, channels and videos that just repost TikToks still have to be somewhat successful, otherwise people wouldn't still be doing it. But while watching some of these compilations, there was a particular video that stood out to me. SJW Triggered making a cringe compilation of the libs of TikTok. Cringe compilations were particularly popular in the 2016 commentary days, where people would actively go out of their way to view content that gives them secondhand embarrassment, often to react to it for a video or just to make fun of the creator and have a good laugh. These mainly faded off as YouTube's bullying policy became more strict. But much like compilations, they still somehow stick around today, by merging with TikToks, leading to TikTok cringe compilations, the last whimper of a dying genre. While the merch plug at the beginning advertises the channel as anti-SJW, another popular trend from 2016, the video doesn't choose to target social justice warriors or extremists, it's just a compilation of people talking about pronouns. But the weirdest part of this came after the video was concluded. In the outro card, there was a link to an unlisted video with 100,000 views, talking about why Black Lives Matter is a bad thing. What the hell have I stumbled myself into? And here's the kicker, the video was positively received. And I believe this is because of the process needed to stumble across the video in the first place. The whole atmosphere surrounding this video was constructed to appeal to those who are anti-LGBT, so it assumes that if you're the type to enjoy that sort of content, then you may also be against Black Lives Matter, funneling the viewers into watching a video that wouldn't be available to the larger public, where it's more likely to receive criticism, creating an echo chamber. Echo chambers and pipelines are other very common things you'll see on TikTok, which is when you get recommended a specific type of video and it slowly spreads to your entire For You page. That's exactly how Andrew Tate became so widely known, getting his followers to spread clips of him to lure more people into paying for his fake university course. But other pipelines exist with other topics, like Family Guy clips put next to mobile gameplay. Wait. Didn't we already go over these? That the gameplay and satisfying videos were distracting and it kept people engaged? It's all a connected pipeline, trying to lower your attention span by making you watch three things at once. All for what? To become successful on TikTok. And it works. After all, it's the exact type of content needed to stay successful on the site. Generic, highly replicable, attention-grabbing and retaining content. This is something less common for YouTube's more generic shorts algorithm, but people like Andrew Tate can still pop up regardless. The side effect for all this high-speed content is one that's ultimately damaging in the long run, where people may begin to feel like day-to-day -day life has become inadequate. This is especially bad for people with ADHD and other attention-based mental disorders, as apps like TikTok can leave those distracted from actual important events, like if they have to get schoolwork done or talk to friends. While I was never super into TikTok, there was a point in time where every time I got my schoolwork done early, I would watch YouTube shorts, distracting me for what was left of class and putting me in somewhat of a trance, an autopilot, a state of mindless scrolling, sensory overload. 
I got to learn about strange people, life advice, or have a chuckle at a funny meme. But by the time it was done, I genuinely couldn't remember a single thing about any of the 20 or more videos I watched. The thing I like about platforms like YouTube so much is that it's always a place where people can put together something they're passionate about, and other people can watch. To peel back the curtain for a sec, throughout the entirety of my time on this site, I have never felt a need to hire an editor or thumbnail designer, and I've never had to sell out to some scummy mobile game companies for extra money. Because I've always considered YouTube to be more of a creative outlet, and not a business. It's fine if others choose to use this site for other means, there are some channels I really like that do this. But in my eyes, the main appeal of YouTube is seeing a creator honing in on their craft, as they keep working on different projects. Then, eventually, putting together something thought-provoking. And that takeaway just isn't there when it comes to shorts. You could tell me about a million weird stories, or 10,000 facts, or however many life hacks, comments, or memes, but I'd rather watch something that gets me thinking, or even angry, rather than staring blankly like a machine. Shorts are meant to satisfy the short-term memory, to keep you engaged looking at the pretty colors or funny family guy clip, and for those who use them to burn a few minutes, or to stop negative thoughts from sinking in, more power to you. The people I'm concerned about are the people who go home and immediately hop onto TikTok or YouTube Shorts, and get gripped for hours on end. It's happened to me before. All I really remember was the disgust I felt with myself after rotting in that echo chamber of repetitive, mindless sludge. Next time, when you start watching Shorts, try to remember to not get hooked, and stay productive that day. Maybe go outside, or read a book every once in a while. If you dial back to enjoy normal content, you won't be stuck bored out of your mind forever. A fate that, for a lot of people, is worse than physical pain. Or you can always go deeper and deeper into the insanity of satisfying colors, goofy sounds, and Family Guy paired with mobile gameplay. You can do whatever you want with your attention span, but personally, I think I'd rather keep it.